And then recently we had a boom, and uh, let's go through this. In uh, 1780, uh, the first that had a clue about things that were with electricity and our body was uh, Galvani. Uh, he was making an experiment with, with um, uh, frogs, and he discovered that that frog, uh, um, you can move a body of that frog uh, using electricity. Uh, there is a really, then it started really from there. From there, like we got then, so a nervous system that it, it, it moves with electricity, electricity and uh, magnetic fields are overlapped. Uh, what about the brain? There is a nice um, uh, scene in AT, the movie from Steven Spielberg. They are in the labs and they are playing with frogs and there is like, this telepathy on going on with, between the alien and the little boy of the movie. Anyway, out of records. So yes, galvanics, uh, bioelectromagnetics, 1880. Uh, then uh, it was in 1875 uh, that um, there was proof that the brain was also having like a uh, that electricity was having a, a big uh, role play in uh, in the brain as well. So, yeah, it basically discovered the electrical nature of the brain. But we need to wait for Hans Berger to discover the alpha waves. Before uh, we uh, read the alpha wave, we, we were able to read the alpha waves of, uh, of the brain. Uh, we need to uh, sense them. We need like some kind of uh, reading machine for that. The first reading machine that was uh, reading uh, electricity out of the brain was invented in 1994 uh, by Angelo Musso. It, is called, it, is called, it was called human circulation balance because he discovered the, the link between uh, blood activity and brain activity. So uh, abstracting from electricity and fields, just about we read where uh, which part of the brain has uh, blood activity the most, and we can deduct that there is a brain activity and going there. Um, yeah, it's kind of archetype of MRI and PET. Uh, then finally, Hans Berger, uh, German, um, German say a neuroscientist, but um, it discovered the alpha waves uh, at the beginning called the Berger wave. It's basically the most simple uh, wave, the most strongest wave, electrical wave that can be spotted by, um, by uh, yeah, tools um, that can measure the voltage on going on uh, in our cranium. So uh, with simple, I won't say simple, but yeah, with some machines, it was about it was um, able to uh, read uh, brain activity. So, what is a what is a wave? Basically, we have um, things are going on uh, between neurons. These neurons fire; um, th their activity consists uh, in firing. Uh, that means that they uh, send messages to each other using electricity. When that happens, so there is some kind of uh, electric field that is on go with some power voltage in different area. If we uh, we can we are able to to measure that is when you uh, we put a screwdriver uh, with a lead into the the plug and we see that the LED switch on is more or less the same. Is is electricity is basically if we take uh, if there is electricity, we connect something, the electricity will pass through that. If we can then can measure the signal that is passing through the wire that we connected, then we know uh, how, how much power there is in that part of the brain. So if we put a, connect a, bi a wire here on the skin, and then we measure uh, what's going on, what the electricity that comes out from here, we are able now to see to measure it, to measure this part of the brain activity from an electrical point of view. There are also a little, um, for going, moving on, um, nice things about Hans Berger, one of those uh, coincidences or dark swarm that happened. Um, it was uh, in the military and then uh, he had an incident. 
nothing terrible, but he had big, uh, pay, uh, big uh, shock. Uh, his sister, uh, miles away, uh, had an impression, had a feeling, so convinced his fa uh, her father to write a letter to him, like, "What's happening? Are you okay?" Blah blah blah. He just had a bad incident uh, while he was doing a training uh, with the military. So it, is, it was like kind of how the brain works. How is it possible that my sister so far in space ca could like re had a sensation about my experience? So he decided to, to study the brain and then he started like uh, to dig into it and eventually became, uh, yeah. Um, it discovered the alpha waves is the first. Um, after that, uh, it was hired by the Nazis and he committed suicide. Probably he spotted something what's about like how this can be used as well. Then we need to wait for uh, 1964 when uh, to wait for a new version of Burger Machine uh, that was able like to detect more than just alpha waves and with a big higher resolution. So, uh, like the computer, like it got smaller and more efficient, and it was with a special headset. They were it was able to spot. Uh, more than just alpha waves, also beta waves and uh, theta waves. Um, these uh, different names um, are um, uh, referred to different frequencies. So if this is a frequent, this might be another fr uh, frequency. It's uh, basically how uh, many times the wave goes up and down per second, per, per time unit. Uh, while we we'll sleep, we are, there are more uh, um, smoother waves. While we are active, there are more, uh, more uh, high frequencies on going on. Um, it was also inspiring uh, many other people at that time. Uh, I wrote a book called uh, The Living Brain. It was in this book, uh, it was mm, the first one that was like putting from an outside point of view, a big a kind of difference between the brain and the mind as two different entities. Uh, this book inspired um, the inventor of the dream machines that were used by um, Barogs, one was one writer that was using it. It's it's uh, the, the the thing the, the principle is this one: if we have frequencies, waves, on, in this case electrical, in our brain, can we uh, stimulate these uh, frequencies with uh, other frequencies? So, uh, if I um, in this case, if I look at this uh, light that switch on and off with a certain frequency, I can. Um, induct my um, uh, brain activity waves into a certain state of frequencies. And so I can modify, it's like taking drugs, I can modify uh, what's going on in my brain. I can relax myself, I can do other things. Um, of course, this inspired not only big men's, but also, yeah, commercial applications. Um, for example, this is a tool, so you listen to music according to the music. Oh, this is so annoying. Sorry. Uh, according to the music, the, they make you listen also a, a special frequency that drives your brain to, to go to a special uh, state. Uh, but I don't know if anybody heard about this. It was uh, two weeks ago. Uh, the Russian um, um, uh, enabled their um, carrier uh, with uh, this light, uh, with this beam. So basically, it's a light beam uh, that uh, brings people to vomit or to have nausea or to have hallucinations. It's just like it's a light, but the principle is the same. So instead of driving you to nice and uh, relaxed uh, uh, mind state, it drives you to exactly the opposite. Um, also, the guy, Walter, uh, the one that um, uh, built a burger better version uh, of the um, uh, Brave Sensoring uh, helmet, uh, also uh, recognized this little problem in the sense that when we are about to have a um, a uh, decision or let's say a, uh, an act of cognition. Well, that is uh, present in our brain some uh, moments before. So let's say I want, I decide, I have, I decide to, I have one bot, two buttons and uh, I'm asked like to push one or the other one. And uh, when I am about to decide to push the right one, for example, uh, well, my brains has elaborated that before I am aware of it. So this 
put some uh, question about uh, uh, free will, of course. Um, yeah. Now we need like to, in order to make the things a bit uh, consistent, because I would like to pass not only things about BCIs, but also to give a context where this has born and how, uh, uh, why the trillions of money are in there. Um, in, uh, yeah, in, at the end of the 60s, uh, this guy, Jay uh, Lidlicker, uh, was uh, Licklider, uh, was um, first director of DARPA. Uh, he had uh, a behavioral science uh, background and also, um, yes, and also psychoacoustic. Well, it's more interesting. Uh, the psychoscience, the psycho, the behavioral uh, psychology background. Um, he had the idea of internet. Basically, he was the the one that said, "Okay, we can do this. We it will be like amazing to have it." Um, he was the first director. He pushed the idea. He was like the one that uh, basically forecast and had the vision about the internet. For him, it was a galactic network of things and entities interconnected one each other. He wrote also a book called Man Computer Symbiosis. So that's not the cover he had in mind for it. But um, all the concept that um, man, let's say the, the, the almost totality of the concept that uh, it's heard about uh, uh, transhumanist uh, minds, it's already as the seeds in that book. 99% of them. Um, he was thinking the human computer symbiosis as a, as a, not in the term of singularity, but more in the terms of uh, augmented intelligence. So the computer as a symbiosis for, uh, this is our point of view. Then we, we can guess which is the computer point of view, which would be a symbiosis for digital life anyway. So yes, uh, he had like, uh, he wanted like, he, he, he came from a project called um, um, uh, Regate. Well, it was about like Sage. Uh, it was about um, a lot of radars uh, in all, in many parts of the, the world. They, and then uh, a, a user interface that uh, brings all the information on to a user. So like to have an Olovision. Uh, on the battlefield, but yes, of course, it was like uh, he may he became the head of uh, information uh, of um, the control program at DARPA. I mean, we are talking about people that uh, like not really an uh, hippie background. We are talking about people that uh, look forward, uh, yeah, let's say discipline and order and control for sure. Um, In, uh, so basically in, in 96, uh, the first uh, internet was shipped to, to UCLA, that is uh, un um, uh, the University of California. And uh, they started like to send me, this was a picture of the first uh, moment in which one the messenger was going through between the, the military facility and the UCLA and then from UCLA to Stanford, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. But uh, so 1969, he just had an idea. He just found the. He just became the director of the, one of the most important agency in the world for what's uh, concerning technologies. Uh, we know how DARPA was born uh, after the Sputnik. Before NASA, they had wanted like an agency for a high risk, high value thing. So, even if it's mad science, uh, let's put money there because it will be strategic for the future. That's DARPA. It was it, at that time, internet was still a military thing. This was the vision he had, more or less. Now, uh, going back to the brain computer interfaces, Jacques Vidal, 1971, uh, was the one that worked, made important steps on BCI. It was, um, first of all, uh, invented the term uh, brain computer interfaces. Um, it's this guy, this is uh, at one meeting in Praga. These are all Russians. Uh, yeah, in 69, he had a research grant from DARPA at UCLA that 
coincidentally, was also the spot for the first internet node. So we have like a, a, a man, lead liker, that has a vision from one part uh, computer networks, on the other side humans. Computer human symbiosis. The first part went really fast, really well. We all used the internet. Uh, the second part had more complication, let's say, but they started the, the two uh, endpoints of the project at the same time with the same uh, aim, let's say, with the same enthusiasm and spirit. Yes. This is what we can see. So there is like, uh, this is internet. So it was like born as an idea there, and then it was translated to, okay, at this point we are still doing uh, yes, we have it in the university and college, but it's still a military thing. No, but I mean, it's like you, you want to play with the internet, you, you, are, you have to sign up a couple of things uh, that are not commercial, commercial related. And then, no, it became, we, what I would like to do is to guess like uh, what happened to the other part of the game, of the, or the other endpoints, like the other side of the project that is the brain net so we were there and we are seeing things now no so we are seeing like the military funding a lot of projects about uh, neuroscience for me it's more a deployment than just where but i don't want to go there um in 2017 so there was this um brain internet is not concept of mine and uh, the word is really nice. It was uh, um, invented by this uh, professor in uh, South Africa, Adan Patanovitz. Uh, he streamed uh, over internet uh, EGG things. And uh, on the other side, there was another guy. There are many experiments about this. Um, um, it's possible also to, to write uh, waves, or let's say mental states, as we, as we said already. So let's say uh, there are many experiments that have been made in this sense. So for example, the firing experiment, when I fire the, uh, on a video game, uh, I don't fire. Um, my signal is uh, transmitted through internet. On the other side, in Japan, let's say, there is a guy uh, that has the reverse of a reading machine. He has like a, a, a TMS, a magnetic um, device, for example, that irradiates uh, magnetic fields in a specific location. And I, in Japan, as a receiver, know because I feel it in my mind that I have to fire. So I will fire the video games and eventually the, uh, the astro um, ship will be hit, uh, hit. So it's kind of in this collaborative, uh, this was one of the experiments that has been made. So just uh, transmitting uh, tr triggers and uh, simple thoughts like let's fire, but we can go a lot Yeah, uh, so what happened? That uh, Vidal basically was able already in 1974 to move a, uh, to move a cursor on a computer or to, to prove that that was possible. It's way be, like before uh, the news that we know. And now, what happened? Yes, so we are still, we are still here, okay? We are still here. We are able already to move cursors on the computer. We are able to do pretty cool stuff already. Uh, what I, yeah. Finally, in uh, 87, um, yeah, this uh, guy, Phil Kennedy, it's called also the Indiana Jones of uh, the brain computer interface. He floated to, recently flowed to, to, he flowed to Belize and he asked for a, illegal brain surgery implants because he wanted to experiment his own idea about uh, about language. He's also the founder of Neural Signals. He's uh, also, it was one of the mind behind uh, BrainGate that is, uh, uh, there are, when, um, when we, uh, when we approach like this matter, we'll see that there are many people that work together and then they got connected and then they split and then there are some facilities that are the same and then they got money from the same people. It's, uh, it's just like a community and, uh, they are, they're doing this, but, uh, yes, we need to, at the moment we are only, 
we are in the field of uh, con reading signals and having triggers. Like, uh, so something happened and I send out uh, an output and then there is uh, something that is about that that happened with the output so I fire something I move the cursor um, it is in 1995 when um, it uh, started to be clear that we could also detect co cognition cognition means intentions means uh, emotions means uh, means uh, basically uh, our key to the universe as a human being since we are we're not we will yeah so going through cognitive neuroscience then uh, 2001 uh, the first article that was digging into it and in 2006 uh, it was uh, proved that we can uh, go really for, far in uh, decoding mental states. So uh, John Dylan Heinz, uh, Max Planck Institute uh, in Germany, he um, basically he asked uh, the same question, will you switch on the red uh, or the left buttons? And he had uh, amazing, amazing uh, results. He was able to detect the intentions 10 seconds before the user would eventually know that he had a choice he, he made a choice so i decide i'm decide for beers or coke and uh, 10 seconds before i'm aware of my decision my my mind as my brain as is already there so this puts a little bit more cons so after after he discovered that he made a lot more experiments and then he started going around the world making speech about ethical issues of course Basic, what we do today is that then we plug uh, artificial intelligence into the, into the thing. And uh, what's happening? It's happening that we can recognize pattern a lot better. So we have like all these uh, waves that are going on on different frequencies. And uh, now we can classify them really well. So we can really, well, from a bunch of cows and uh, data, we are really able to say, okay, you're thinking about a cat now, you are, you're feeling like happy or... Um, decoding, narrow decoding. So, a shoes, brain, the computer algorithm map into this, because reads basically what's, what's going on here. And uh, then there is a... Uh, um, we translate the waves into an image that's uh, easily done. And, uh, and then the computer will look over thousands and thousands of image, uh, images and classify them. So when a shoes like that is seen, and then it's closer to this one. So this correspond, this correspond, this correspond, this correspond, everything corresponds, but this, this is different. But yeah, with a certain degree, we can say that this is more a shoes than a cat. This is the decoding. See, uh, yeah. So, yeah, ten seconds before the awareness was possible. Then we go also. Let's see what about the language. There are two approaches for the language. Uh, let's see first the toughest, uh, the one that involves semantics uh, decoding. So. Um, in 2008, uh, 2008 was a really special year, 2008, 2009. Uh, Michael, Marcel Just and Tom Mitchell at the Carnegie Mellon University, they were able to um, deduct. Uh, let's say, uh, ask a computer what you were thinking, if you were thinking of a hammer of a, or a mm, screwdriver, and uh, the computer would answer with uh, almost 99% of uh, precision what you were thinking at the word that you were thinking at of course a car or a screwdriver is in different pra in this, it's in many places uh, they worked uh, with the Intel uh, so we need a really uh, strong um, um, decoding uh, abilities and skills that is possible with uh, a lot of computer computational power 
and uh, he achieved that. And, and Carnegie Mellon University, there is also the Intel Advanced Research Lab. His director is, uh, again, an ex, uh, an ex uh, DARPA director. Uh, I say again because, uh, yeah, anyway, um, we'll see it later. And yes, thanks to like uh, some uh, founding, uh, they were able like to come with uh, this uh, goal. A uh, few years later, in 2017, the same guy published like the Going Beyond Bananas. Interesting title. They were able to mind read complex thoughts like phrases and also to forecast what the user would, uh, what the user, what the person would have uh, told after, uh, like. They are, uh, it's possible to read uh, uh, bef uh, ahead of the awareness. So it's possible like, to guess what a person is about to say. Um, interest, this time they were backed up by YARPA. Uh, they are really focused in uh, forecasting. Um, YARPA is the arm, while well, uh, DARPA is the armed arm uh, research uh, arm of uh, DOD. Um, um, the Department of Defense, uh, YARPA is more is a creature of the Office uh, of Director of uh, National Intelligence. It's kind of centralized office that was wanted by that guy after 1911 to have like one common spike in the White House to foresee uh, all the activities of the uh, intelligence agency. And YARPA is their uh, research, uh, advanced research uh, part of that. Anyway. Uh, yes, if we go, on, I say like um, we, we, we cross uh, directors at that time um, uh, in 2008, so with the first uh, Michael, Marcel Just research, uh, DARPA was also financing a project, well, financing that uh, thing, so screwdrivers and uh, so guessing words basically, because they wanted uh, with the for me, uh, they wanted to uh, have uh, telepathic communication on, f on the battlefield between uh, soldiers. So uh, in order to do that, uh, they need like some uh, prototype, prototypization. And I think Kurdish Mellon University, uh, to, we, uh, together with uh, Intel, uh, thanks to Marcel, Marcel Just ideas, they realized that uh, and they publish it. Of course, this was not on the news. Um, but today, if you look at the uh, BCI chapter uh, called Silent Talk in Wikipedia, this uh, refers, uh, links directly to the annual budget 2008 of DARP. This was the first time that we had like Silent Talk. Okay, this was the first time that there was a project about, uh, let's say an official project about uh, telepathy through technology. Uh, it, of course, it was sponsored by DARP, but it was not so known. Um, but uh, if you look uh, on the DARPA annual budget, uh, we can find that uh, for million projects. And if we go to if we go to Wikipedia now, it's properly documented. Now, what what's happening? It's from this my point of view. Like it's is that uh, a lot of this research is financed by by the military. Uh, the 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 trick here is basically that, let's say there is some progress, uh, they cover with uh, military secrets. So the, the result of that uh, project is partially public. Let's say some results go will go public, but many results will not be published and will not be available for public domain. In this, in this um, way, we hyperbol hyperbolize uh, a growth that is quite uh, giving some space from the public domain uh, uh, knowledge acquisition. You, you see what I mean? So let's say I have a cool project. I got funding by, by the military. It's the best result of my, of my project is kept secret. I don't know for how long time. And uh, the rest, the, the little things are made public. As like basically uh, all the world work like this, then the interaction that I can have with you if you have another kind of project like that, is on the uninteresting stuff level. While at this, on the military things, they have like real good toys to play with and they can interact with each other with real good toys. That gives them like the chance to go a lot more far ahead than what we can do on the public domain. Anyway, this is the concept of, um, I bring here the concept of uh, um, 
technological supremacy, at some point the, the, the head of the pyramid will detach from the base. Anyway, let's go on. 